Coming up next for Murfreesboro Storytellers on City TV will be a visit to the Discovery Center at Murfree Spring. Our guests will be Billy Little and Tara McDougall. Hello and welcome to Storytellers. I'm your host, John Hood, and we're happy this month to be visiting with you at the Discovery Center at Murphy Spring. And we're happy to have two ladies as our special guest, Billy Little, who is the original executive director of Discovery Center, and Tara McDougall, who's the new director or CEO, as the title goes, I believe. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Billy, tell us how this got started, what, 25 years ago? It's a long time back. Um, Let's see, it got started, I guess, with me having the idea that it would be really fun to have something like this in Murfreesboro, that there weren't very many um, cultural things at that time within the city. There was Oakland's mansion, of course, and the university, but in terms of things for children. And we had moved here with two young boys and soon had a daughter and uh, just felt the need for something educational, creative, and, and fun. Wonderful idea has developed into a, just a great facility. Where did you start out physically with the Discovery okay. Center? Um, we spent a lot of time driving around Murfreesboro with some volunteers and, and ended up at 503 North Maple Street, an old hundred-year-old charming but ramshackle house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we had to get in and tear out a lot of stuff and pretty much piece it back together for the Discovery House. I guess it was known as the Children's Discovery Center back at that time? Children's Discovery House. That's Discovery uh -huh. House, huh? Yeah. Who were some of the principals that helped you get it underway? Oh gosh, there were so many, it's gonna be hard to, to state them, but um, let's see, Bubba Dempsey was very involved, kind of in a, a quiet way, helped us cobble together some of the funding and uh, purchase the, uh, get the purchasing for the property going. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Lon and Christy Newell were involved, uh, David and Donna Jones, um, Joan and David Kellerman were involved, Jennifer and Ron Bombardi, I know Ron is at MGSU. There are probably about seven mm -hmm. couples. And different McDougals, not... Yes, Peter and Peter Susie and McDougal. Susie McDougal. From, uh, Peter uh, and Susie, I think, were both in ceramics with the university. Okay. Uh, Rosalie Martin Landry, okay. Tommy Martin's daughter, right. was very involved. Uh, Betsy Murphy was involved at that time really it burgeoned quickly from a little core group to about 150 volunteers, school teachers. Mayor Joe B. Jackson is somebody who it would not have happened uh, without his leadership. Mm -hmm. Could you ever envision that it would grow into what it has become today? Well, I say that's kind of what kept me going, actually, <laughs> was the hope that we could really do something significant for the community over time. We knew we had to start small, uh, Murfreesboro, as you know, John, was a much uh, different place then. Oh, absolutely. Um, and at that time, the school groups were coming in the door for a dollar a child. Mm -hmm. And we had 11,000 people the year we opened in 1987. That's wonderful. So, yeah. And Tara, you at one time, I believe, were chairperson of the board of directors for Discovery Center? Yes. Um, maybe 99, 2000. That would be about right. Around, uh -huh. For three years when we uh, were, uh, had plans to close down uh, Discovery House and transition and move over here uh, to this very large facility. And I, I remember uh, prior to becoming president of the board, I think, get, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but Billy brought me down to this site, which was, of course, the old Coca-Cola bottling plant. And I remember it was a gray, cold day, and it was very muddy. And I just thought, there is no way that uh, this is a viable option for where we could build this, this center. And of course, uh, with a lot of work and a lot of partnerships, it all happened. And uh, it was a wonderful experience for me being uh, president of this board. It really was. Yeah, growing up on Manny Avenue, I remember the waterworks and the Coca-Cola bottling plant yeah. here at the end of Manny Avenue, which ran into Manchester Highway. Really? And, and yeah. The same physical uh, uh -huh. land, and, and a swamp land here, which yeah. is now known as the wetland. That's right. And actually, it was the water and sewer plant, you know, had the big buildings here next to the Coca Cola right. bottling plant. And the city really needed to have those torn down. They had a lot of environmental hazards. And um, the Corps of Engineers did a, a major study to see if those buildings would be a good place to build our center to reuse those old buildings. Mm -hmm. And they determined that they really weren't 
safe for reuse. Yeah. And that's yeah. when they came down and now eventually. The, that old pump house was uh -huh. part of the old yeah, water and sewer plant. Yeah, well, the water and sewer plant. So it's still out there and uh, houses all of our boots and nets oh, okay. uh, for exploring the wetlands. So. Uh, Billy, was it your idea to move here? Or who, who came up with the site? Um, actually, make a quick, I'll tell you the quick story of it was um, Alan Howell was our board chairman yes. at that time. And I had a meeting uh, over lunch with Alan Howell. And I'm thinking George Gardner, we had brought him in to help us with fundraising. And Mayor Jackson was coming to meet with us at lunch. I showed up a minute late, of course, because I'd been driving down this street looking at this property. And I popped in and I said, oh, I just saw the, the place I would love to have the Discovery Center if we could manage it. And it would be, you know, I was looking at those old Greco, um, what do you call it, Art Deco almost Art Deco. type buildings. And Mayor Jackson said Bart Gordon had just called him to ask how could we reuse the old water and sewer plant. Talking about timing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was just, you know, it literally was not my idea nor theirs. It just was all the pieces coming together. And the Bart, right time. Bart really made it happen, I yeah. think, for us. Substantially. Um, Bart and George and also Tara, you probably don't remember, when you were brought in to be chairman of the board, uh -huh. she was not a current board member at that time. Yes. Oh, okay. She'd been a friend and a volunteer. Billy put me on the quick track. <laughs> fast yeah, track. Kind of famous fast for, track. for doing that fast yeah. tracking. I mean, yeah. George Gardner came to one meeting and he was the, became the president. Yeah. And you didn't come to any and became the president. <laughs> yeah. But um, but we, there was just a lot of uh, synergy with Billy and I when, when we were working. You know, that was a, a fairly major endeavor and, uh, and multiple partnerships from uh, federal to state to local uh, governments and private donors uh, and staff transitions and just a lot going on at once. So we have 25 years completed here as a director and now we're into the next phase, if you will. And I can guarantee you I will not be CEO for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's, we've got that on tape That was now, part of so the we'll agreement, see. yeah. Don't make any rash statements. <laughs> right. We don't know. What are your immediate plans? Uh, uh, well, coming in, uh, the immediate plans were to work with the board uh, and our staff to come up with a one-year action plan. Okay. And which we've done. And uh, from there, uh, we're looking at this year next year and, and into three and five year plans of expansion with our programs, uh, expansion with our exhibits, and potentially down the road some physical expansion. Mm -hmm. um, something that uh, I formed starting in 2013 that I'm really excited about is, is a kids council. Uh, so we have a board and we have an advisory board and we're adding to that a kids council uh, oh, which neat. will utilize the uh, impact or input from these kids uh, who are kind of at that threshold age of where they're kind of at growing the current Discovery Center to ask them what they would like to see. We're and talking kind of ten year old, right? Uh, or the 12? eight eight to fifteen year old kind mm -hmm. of kind of spread. And it really kind of depends on the child because they're all a, a little different. But that's that's the age group. Uh, and we want to have about twelve kids on it. Uh, right now we've got three that have committed and uh, they walk through initially and do an assessment of the current facility. And then when they're traveling with their <laughs> parents, great. if they're in other facilities, oh, yeah. they report back and say this what they've seen. This is really good for their resumes, too. It is. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Yes. Well, why not go to your clientele, go to your exactly. customers? Exactly. Absolutely. I have to interrupt yeah. for a second, but um, I'm trying to think. Is it James, um, Jim Brooks, who was on the Art Center Commission with us? His wife, Rebecca, taught, I think it was at Christiana, and before we opened the old Discovery House, I, we had done a contest of um, school children to send in ideas for the uh -huh. Discovery House, and her class sent in like 40 lined pages of ideas. And literally over the years, when I felt like we were getting kind of stale and the staff were going, well, you know, what might we do or what might mm -hmm. we try, I would go to that list Pull and out say, oh, the, the kids, kids, the kids right. had this idea. Yeah. You know, the, they're so, so passionate wonderful. about it. Yeah. Uh, a, a another uh, new uh, partnership or expansion of a partnership is with uh, the school systems, uh, specifically working with Linda Gilbert and uh, her team. Uh, we are getting um, some school buses that we're applying for grant money to uh, gut and uh, have mobile science buses that will travel uh, and take the science and maybe have an art bus down the road. 
so that those plans are in the work. Um, to go from school to school. To go from school to school. Um, meeting with uh, uh, Chris over at Special Kids mm -hmm. and Project Help, Susan Waldrop, to talk about what a special needs camp would look like mm -hmm. for next summer here. And, uh, you know, they're the experts and talk to the parents and family members of what they'd like to see. Okay. Uh, so we're excited about that potential opportunity. <laughs> and you see, the children some... enjoy being that's, here. That's wonderful. <laughs> Tell us about your, your budget. Uh, we're working at just around a uh, million dollar budget right now. And uh, we rely on various uh, streams for that budget. Uh, a huge part of that budget is walk-ins, memberships, uh, and uh, sponsorships. Uh, we have a lot of corporate support, uh, individual donors, grants, uh, so it comes from various sources. Uh, but we pride ourselves that uh, we try and keep it around 50% of earned income okay. uh, and keep that as a target. You have special events at various times during the year, yes. as I recall. This month, uh, we've got our uh, we're very excited about hosting again the Martin Luther King Day uh, and that's coming up January 21st mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we have 10 to 11 free uh, days a year uh, we're very supportive of community outreach and this is one avenue for us uh, we have corporate support from Nissan and Bank of America uh, to help offset the costs of these free days so uh, free days is one aspect. We have Hispanic Heritage Day we had last fall in September. It was a huge success in partnership with the school systems. Uh, and then in addition to the free days, we have free memberships for families in need. Uh, and then with school children, all, all children in the state of Tennessee cannot be turned down from attending a, a field trip. Uh, and we, Discovery Center, through generous donations of corporations, saves school systems thousands of dollars, both here in Rutherford County and Davidson County and other contiguous counties. Uh, so we're, we're very proud of our community outreach aspect to Discovery Center. And, and you know, that comes from Billy. That was a, uh, a deliberate effort on her part early on that all children uh, sh and all families should have access to, to so Discovery. You bring in Children from even so, from surrounding counties. Oh, uh, the bulk, the majority of our school groups right now, this last year, have come from Davidson County, the highest percentage. And uh, so that's that's interesting that that you know we're getting. Uh, so I'm uh, working uh, diligently in garnering more uh, economic support uh, from Davidson County. Oh, very good. Yeah. Tell us about some of the exhibits that you've brought in over the years, and uh, either I one or both of you. Start with that just to give a little mm -hmm. background. Yes. I think our first traveling exhibit we ever had was a dinosaur exhibit at the old building that oh, yeah. Bob Parks uh, underwrote okay. for us. Traveling exhibits um, can be very, very costly, I can imagine. and when we start looking for them, the, the price point may range from like thirty thousand dollars up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for several months. Mm. So. Um, in lean years when the economy was doing badly, then we were able to negotiate some really good exhibits for lower costs because they weren't, you know, uh, not that many museums could host them. Well, and, so. and right now the push is, uh, from an economic development, workforce development standpoint, I'm hearing from uh, community leaders and corporations about having a traveling exhibit in this area here that addresses uh, STEM education, which, oh, as yes. you know, John, that's a huge push nationwide. Uh, but to have an exhibit that will inspire children to uh, recognize what career paths could be out there in science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, so that's what, what we're looking at for fall 2013. I think one of the early ones we had was microbes, which was something yeah. that was really above the heads of a lot of the younger visitors. Yeah. But the idea has been to use those traveling exhibits to reach some of the different STEM topics and mm -hmm. older children and different um, interests. We had one wonderful one that was called Flip It, Fold It, Figure It Out. It was all about math, but done in a very hands-on visual way. Mm -hmm. A lot of other um, museum consortiums prepare them and some for-profit companies prepare traveling exhibits. So, yeah. So and a lot I, out there. And I think one of the aspects that I'm hearing from people that sets Discovery Center apart from other museums is that children learn through play. And I know uh, Billy with yeah. her past education, that was a, a target area for her to right. study in an area she's things. still interested in. And it's, it's almost like accidental learning that you provide a hands-on 
venue for children to explore firsthand, mm -hmm. and that inspires that natural curiosity. So I think that's what I hear from everyone that visits from out of state, that Discovery Center, above all other children's museums, excels at that play aspect. I think we've really stuck to it. Have you know? fun, they don't realize they're learning, I guess, at the yeah, same time. Yeah, yeah, and teachers appreciate that. We're, you know, school groups are uh, a big part of our mission, and uh, another piece that sets us apart is that the teachers don't do the teaching when they come for the school groups. We have education specialists mm -hmm. that do the tours, and uh, that allows the teachers to kind of step back and ob observe, and then maybe take some ideas and tools back to the classroom. So. So your tour directors have special training to do what they're doing then, right? Oh, sure. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We've, and, and professional development uh, is priority uh, for all our staff members. Another thing I think that's important to mention is just that where we are located, although it seemed like a crazy spot, having the adjacent wetlands yeah. oh, yes. was a perfect segue from the old Discovery House where we had a little indoor creek table mm -hmm. and a live animal collection. Here we have like this fabulous wildlife mm -hmm. right out the door. Um, so along with the indoor aquarium and the live animals we teach with, there's just so many things that do surprise the children, kind of jar them into some new ability to be interested or to learn. And also the whole public education for the adults. Too. Right. To allow adults, parents, teachers to go back home and be able to I engage in conversations about what they've seen, about what and, they've seen uh -huh. and, and kind of talk about science. Mm -hmm. A lot of adults are not comfortable talking about science and hopefully around here we have the tools uh, and the verbiage that will allow them to feel comfortable right. about talking about that. One thing I wanted to touch on was uh, that's really important. We've got a new outdoor exhibit uh, that we haven't made any announcements about, but that yes. will be unveiled in May of 2013 uh, called Nature Play, but the, the abstract to that is to encourage children uh, to discover nature outside by being active. Mm. And so stay tuned for that. So that's yeah, going to be a, a new great. new addition right. in 2013. And that's also so important because you hear so many parents say, oh, I don't feel safe letting my children play outside, which is such a yeah. sad oh, such a thing. Yeah. Um, and so this will really be an avenue where people feel comfortable, they feel safe being here, and it'll just be is a, that a permanent, natural extension. Uh, program? That's a permanent mm -hmm. exhibit, outdoor exhibit. Uh, and then, of course, our, our wetland walks. We have uh, on uh, Thursdays at 4 and Fridays at 4, we have nature nuts and nature walks where you can go with our education specialists. The kids can and have binoculars. And I tell you, John, every time I go out in the wetlands, I rarely see something unless I'm with one of the education uh, specialists because they can spot everything uh, from green herons to mm -hmm. we have a baby muskrat right now that comes out and greets the kids. We have river otter. We've got great blue herons. It's amazing. I mean, yes. What right you see right, right here. Right here in the heart of the city. Right, right, right here. Wonderful. It is amazing. And that's the other unique aspect and the brilliance of choosing this location is that it is uh, an urban setting. You've got wetlands in an urban setting. And I think that novelty helps us with some grant applications yeah, because it really sets us apart. Rare in most children's music. Yeah. Of course, Paul Vaughn, I have to give yeah. kudos to him for Please. being the project yeah. manager for all of uh, <laughs> this building um, growth and the addition to the building. And uh, he always would say, oh, this is the worst possible site yes. for a building. <laughs> and yet, it, it's really proved to serve us so well. Um, yeah. And Paul's giving you a lot of support through the Jennings Jones Foundation, yes, I'm they've sure. Been yes, wonderful and choice. he's still... And uh, Christy Houston, of course. I consider him a uh, personal advisor. He, uh, I work closely with him uh, when we're on the board, and uh, he's just very uh, level-headed and knowledgeable. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you've had some great talent to help you. Oh, uh, and John yeah. Richmond. I, that, I tell Bill Richmond and the Richmond family that uh, John was one of the reasons I felt like I could sleep at night when we were raising money <laughs> uh, for this place because yeah. he was so meticulous. And if you owe John any money for Discovery Center, he's going to find you. <laughs> and uh, so we miss John. So don't make a pledge unless you're going to make That's it good. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. what's your biggest challenge other than uh, funding and, and keeping uh, the. I would say for me coming? right now, uh, the biggest challenge. Uh, there's, number one, there's so many things I want to do, and I, I tell people that 
I can only look through the lens uh, of a new person for probably mm -hmm. for about 18 months, mm -hmm. and then I'm part of the culture. So that's one challenge. But I think also we're, we're a secret in so many areas. You would be surprised how many people don't know about us. Amazing. Uh, and you know, I, I drove to Nashville for 10 years to work, and so my comment to friends in Nashville is, you can come once a month with a membership to Discovery <laughs> Center to have access to all of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say the challenge is uh, getting the word out uh, to families in, in other counties. The school groups are all coming. We, ne we need to get the word out. Mm -hmm. Billy, what's your greatest uh, accomplishment over your 25 years? Would you, oh my goodness. Any, would you, could you peg any one thing? I don't, I don't think in terms of accomplishment, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. I mean, to me, the accomplishment is, for me personally, is just being able to pop in and know that things are not only as good as they ever were, but we'll be getting better. So I, I guess well, I'll, and, I'll claim and I'm Tara gonna, as I'm a great tell you, I'm gonna tell you what her greatest accomplishment <laughs> okay. was. And I think her children would agree. Uh, this is uh, a woman who, uh, against all odds and against people saying she wasn't going to be able to do this, accomplished this uh, and also raising, with a little help from her husband, uh, <laughs> but raising three of the, the wisest, uh, what, most wonderful children I've ever met. So. They're great too. You mentioned possible physical expansion. Yes. What, what are you talking about in regards to that? We have the potential on this site to expand up to roughly 20,000 square feet. Um, long, how, many, how many square feet now? 20, we're at 30,000 now. Okay. So, to add, so add, add another 20,000 square feet. feet. But the mm -hmm. ultimate goal uh, is looking at adjacent property eventually. And then, this has been a plan with Parks and Rec and the city for a long time, is connecting to the Greenway through Cannonsburg. Uh, and Either under or over? <laughs> probably cost-wise going under is yeah. what I've been told. Uh, but that's, that's the next big goal, is, is expansion and connecting to the Greenway. And, uh, and I think Bart Gordon would be very excited about that idea as well. That yeah. was his dream as well, yeah. I think. And he still considers this his baby, too. Discovery well, Center. His yeah. development of the Greenway has just been and, the yeah. great it's one of the best the things community. ever done here, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's I'm really enjoying it from a bicycle standpoint. Right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I have to say, I, I, ha I do have one more goal which I feel strongly about, which is really just being able to make sure that this place not only continues, but that we're able to really reach all the kids who need to be reached. And that's where the target just keeps getting bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the, the number of children on free lunch um, mm -hmm. when we started in the old house was probably about 10% of the population of Murfreesboro. Now I think it's close to 50% or above. Yeah. Um, so so the, the need, our funds run out sooner every year and the need yeah. grows. So, uh, but, but being committed to that is yeah. crucial. Who is in charge of your fundraising or your development right now? Do you have any one person or a committee? Uh, we have um, a, a committee, and so we have several people on the committee. And right now I'm overseeing a lot of that and, of course, uh, board support. Um, for 2013, this coming year, we've restructured the board with standing committees. So um, we've got some great people involved and, uh, and a great new board president. Uh, so confident that the development team will do great work this year. And who is the new board president? Uh, it is Justin Hutchins. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're thrilled. About yeah. That. So. Do you have a continual need for volunteers? Yes, and and Not I'm glad you. Board, I'm you glad you brought that operation. up because that's something uh, that's part of our strategic plan is to kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. develop that professional volunteer. Mm -hmm. We're a great spot for uh, teenagers to get experience as a volunteer, but we also need the retired professionals, uh, and that's crucial. Uh, and they go through an interview process, can fill out online their application, and so volunteers are vital uh, for us to accomplish our mission. One of the things that is so crucial, I think, is having volunteers that we can train to explain the different exhibits like mm -hmm. we're sitting here right next to this airplay exhibit okay. yeah. and it's not the sort of thing that a child a child will go up and start playing with it but they really don't quite get what sure. they're doing or what the capabilities are and all too often you know one parent may be watching that child over there and the other one is yeah you know. so um, having volunteers that we can train who enjoy talking with people enjoy talking with children or who have a science background, sometimes is good, or yeah. those that we can train 
just about the different exhibits to make it a more vital experience. Yeah, that, that's, that's really important that they have direction with that. I know in the past you've made the facility available to groups that want to have events here. Do you still do that? We do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, in fact, this coming year we've got uh, a one, one individual that's going to be responsible for um, our facilities rental. And uh, last, well, we've, we've got requests usually monthly to come in mm -hmm. and, uh, and rent the facility. It makes an excellent and a, such a unique facility. John, we've even had a wedding. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. A wedding. So that was, uh, yeah. I think, my children, steps. <laughs> I think my children are glad that, you know, I'm retiring before they, before, they, before the last one has to have her wedding at yeah. Discovery Center. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it makes a, we actually, we had a son who, uh, they had a wedding reception at the Heinz Museum in Pittsburgh, which was not dissimilar yeah. from this, and they put down a dance floor, had sure. a seated dinner, and, and it was a great environment for kids. Oh, for I the, can imagine. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. yeah. It was fun. Well, this is a wonderful story for your 25 years of service and Tara Yoon starting out now with a different hat on, that is, six, rather than president of the six, board. Six, seven months of service. And CEO. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah a CEO. And you had a real nice tribute to Billy uh, in recent times. Yeah, to that, was, that, was that was wonderful. And thank you so much mm -hmm. for helping spread the word and for coming to all of our many, many things over the years, John. You well, we just, enjoy, we just enjoy the events. It just, well, it's just a, John's such a Superman, area. superhero I know, in yes. Rutherford County. Any, any closing comments as we wind up our story about the, the Discovery Center? No, just thank you for letting us talk about it. Tara, may I ask Well, and, and I think it? just thanking the immediate community for being so supportive, because while we talk about expansion and needing support from other counties, this place would not be here without the support of Rutherford County and Parks and Recreation and Mayor Bragg and uh, Ernest okay. Burgess, who's a past president. So we just thank everybody for their involvement. And Billy, you mentioned earlier about Mayor Joe Jackson, and yes. you remind me of so many wonderful things that he brought about as mayor yeah. in the city of Murfreesboro. He was he instrumental was in the Center for the Arts, mm -hmm. turning yeah, that over to sense. a group that didn't know what they were getting into <laughs> <laughs> to develop an interest yeah. center for well, the old post office, the old library. And he, he did a lot of, uh, not real hand-holding, but pretty much he, he sat down with me, I, I bet, once a week for two years. I can imagine. Uh, before we got into the old building just helping me look for a site, directing me. He would say, I'd tell him I need roofing tiles. He'd say, well, call so-and-so. And tell him I said he's got to give you some. And uh, yeah. sure enough, whoever it was would do it. And uh, just over and over again, he was such a true supporter of this place. Yeah. yeah. I often think of Joe B as a personal friend and mm -hmm. what a great yeah. community leader he was. And he, uh, he respected Billy uh, so much guy. for everything she did. It's a mutual so. thing, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it, was a, it was a great part of our community. Yeah. Well, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for all you're going to do. Thank <laughs> you. And congratulations you, on the wonderful facility here at Discovery Center. Thank you so much. We appreciate you having us. Thank and thank you for joining us for another conversation for City TV.